Switchgrass is a target uh, for the Department of Energy to produce renewable fuels, uh, that's liquid fuels, uh, that come from the biomass of a plant. So uh, in Switchgrass's case, Switchgrass is a perennial plant, which means it gets planted once, and then we can continually harvest biomass off that plant over many, many years. Switchgrass is also a native North American perennial. Uh, that means it lives here in the U.S. and grows really well on marginal soils with low inputs. Switchgrass is also a uh, plant that produces very large root structures over time and sequesters a lot of carbon into the soil uh, where you grow switchgrass. And so one of the things that uh, we're doing right now is we have these, this diversity set planted out at at least 10 different locations across the U.S. and, and there's parts of it that are planted out, at, planted out at additional locations. And this gives us the ability to measure all of those different genotypes, the variants of switchgrass, in a single location and compare between them. And that's really what's allowed us uh, in switchgrass to start to pull out genetic regions that are really important for switchgrass to grow at a specific location. Switchgrass is a polyploid, and to be more specific, a tetraploid, which means that there are four copies of every gene, or pretty much every gene, in the genome. And this poses particular problems both for breeders and on the computational side. From the breeding perspective, having four copies of any gene means that you need to know which specific copy you want to target. And to do that, you need to know the, both the gene sequence but also the physical location on the chromosomes of those genes. And this is why having a genome assembly and a genome project for switchgrass in general is really, really important. With the switchgrass assembly, where we used long read sequencing technology and combined a variety of approaches, we were able to fully resolve the two subgenomes, building a resource that allows us to study adaptation, biofuel yield, and other aspects of switchgrass evolution in situ without a genetic model. So right now, the Bioenergy Research Centers, which are funded by the Department of Energy and have been working for about uh, now 11 years on uh, developing cellulosic biofuels, uh, are working on switchgrass and other uh, perennial bio stocks that produce a lot of biomass with low inputs uh, reducing their effect on the environment. Uh, to be able to break apart the cell walls uh, of the plants, the woody material, and extract the sugars inside. And so that work has been going on with bioenergy centers to do that. And they're also working on uh, using the leftover material, which is called lignin, which is a really hard, tough stuff in switchgrass, to be able to convert that into other bioproducts that are useful, uh, like aromatics and, and other kinds of complex biomolecules that are actually really expensive to make in any other way.